everyone, and welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be doing a short brief on the Mitsubishi A6M0. We're going to cover some of the variants, we're not going to go too much into detail on those, and we're going to take a look at the armament, as well as some other fun facts, and basically what it was used for during the war. Enjoy the video. The Mitsubishi A6M0 is a long-range carrier-based fighter aircraft that was deployed by the Imperial Japanese Navy from 1940 to 1945. It was constructed by Mitsubishi Aircraft Company. When it was first debuted in early World War II, the Zero was considered the world's most capable carrier-based fighter, combining great handling with a very long range. It was also utilized as a land-based fighter by the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service. The Zero had a reputation as a dogfighter in early combat operations with a kill ratio of 12 to 1. Due to design restrictions, the Zero was less effective against modern Allied fighters, and by 1943, it was outclassed by airplanes such as the F-6F Wildcat and the Corsair. This section may just be the only part where the Zero's real flaws start to show. The A6M Zero well, let's start with armor first. The A6M0 had little to no armoring in any of the spots, even the cockpit where the pilot sits. Now, having no armoring is not a problem when you can outmaneuver your enemies to the point where they can't hit you. And sure, that was true for when the Zero's main rivals were the Hawker Hurricane or the F4F. But when you start to get more advanced with more maneuverable allied craft, having no armoring starts to become a problem. And towards the end, Zeros were nothing but flying coffins as they were picked off by the Allied fighters. Now on to armament. The A6M Zero had very heavy armament compared to its American or British counterparts. And for a plane of its size, it was quite impressive. The A6M Zero was armed with two 7mm machine guns as well as two wing-mounted 20mm cannons. The A6M Zero could certainly pack a punch when it was hitting targets, and it was frequently used for ground attack rolls as well. Apart from its guns, the Zero could also carry bombs, not just for kamikaze attacks, as well as regular attacks. Now, since this is a short brief about the Zero, not an hour-long video, I'm not going to cover every different change made for every single variant. I'm going to put the different variants up on screen, and I'm going to summarize them. So basically, the Zero underwent just a couple changes, for example, changing the wing, wing tips and some variants maybe had a little different armament, maybe an increased size for some of the shells. But that's about it. The A6M Zero did not really change over its lifespan. Towards the end of the war, the Mitsubishi A6M0 became sort of a disposable disposable weapon. It was used in kamikaze attacks, and pilots were strapped to little flying bombs and flown into American ships. So in the end, the A6M0 went out as a suicide bomber. Could the Zero have been rescued and been made better? In my opinion, the A6M0 was already a very nice aircraft, and if it was updated as the times continued, there was a chance that it might have been able to compete with the Corsair and the F6F without being outclassed. The A6M0 lacked an arm armoring, which led it to be picked off by Allied fighters. If Jiro Horikoshi might have added some more armoring to the A6M0, it might have been a successful fighter towards the end of the war. Thank you for watching today's video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a good day.